I'm joined now by Howard Marks. He's co-chairman and co-founder of Oak Tree Capital Management. Howard, thanks for joining us. You set the business up back in 1995. What was the investment philosophy then? And has it changed at any point over the subsequent 25 year period? Oak Tree was founded in 1995 by five people who had worked together for an average of about nine years at Trust Company of the West in Los Angeles. And since we had been working together so closely, uh, we knew how we were going to ma- manage money. We didn't have to sit down and say, well, what is our approach going to be? Or rather, all we had to do was uh, write down what we had been doing for all those years. And uh, we came up with an investment philosophy, which has six simple tenets, uh, the importance of risk control, the goal of consistency, being active only in less efficient markets where hard work and skill will pay off, the benefits of uh, specialization, non-reliance on macro forecasts for investment decisions, non-reliance on market timing for success. And uh, these are, as I say, the things we had been doing previously. All we wanted to do was continue under the same approach. And when you set up the business, you also established a set of core principles. Can you talk us through those? Well, it was very important to us, uh, not only how we invested, but also how we ran the business, how we treated people. And we wanted to state that emphatically up front, that that uh, business principles were on par with investment philosophy. So we put out a statement saying that our goal is excellence in investment results. We think they are best achieved through uh, proprietary research uh, and that the business should be run uh, uh, for the benefit of the clients and the employees. We outlined how we thought clients should be treated, avoidance of conflict of interest, transparency, fair fees, et cetera, uh, how employees should be treated, sharing the fruits, uh, how the world should be treated. Uh, you know, not doing anything we would be ashamed to see publicized. And we concluded by saying that if we do these things, we'll be successful. And if we don't do them, we don't deserve to be successful. And we are very happy to stand behind that set of principles. And this is a business that focuses mainly on the alternatives and the fixed income space. But within that, what are the key areas of expertise? Well, our, the, the origin of Oak Tree goes back to 1978 when I was asked at Citibank to start a high yield bond fund. That was the beginning of the high yield bond era. And I think our fund was the first one from a mainstream financial institution. And high yield bond investing involves the intelligent bearing of risk for profit. It is not risk free. We're not talking about guilt edge securities. We're talking about the debt of non-investment grade companies. We have always thought that intelligently bearing risk when it is well compensated, but limited in quantity, uh, was was the right formula for that asset class and all the others. So we've grown from high yield bonds in 78, and also I started the convertible bond fund at City the same year, to specialization in distressed debt. I think we're the largest in the world, and uh, my partner, Bruce Karsh, runs that area and is still managing the funds. Uh, and then uh, you know, some areas in, uh, we expanded to Europe in 1998, and uh, but primarily uh, credit, uh, some private equity activities, and uh, strong specialization in the emerging markets. A fixed income is such a rapidly evolving market. What is it that gives you confidence to launch new product in potentially new areas of the fixed income and alternative space? Well, among our business principles is enumerated the standards for going into a new product area. And uh, the answer is simple. We have to have an area with a special return possibility uh, where we can uh, add value and produce an outcome for the client, which is very helpful in their portfolio. There has to be a way to do it with the risk under control. And not all asset classes are subject to risk control. Some of them, the risk is so high and inescapable. The best example is venture capital. Uh, I don't think there's any way to do venture capital with a high success rate. 
you know, the basic principle is that 80 or 90 percent of the investments will be losses. The one or two out of 10 that, that are successful will carry the day with huge gains. Uh, that's not our style. A few great successes and, and a, a number of uh, failures. So there has to be a way to do it with the risk under control. And we have to have at hand somebody who is uh, able to do it. We only uh, uh, invest uh, where we have expertise. Just going back to, to what you were saying about the future of the business. Uh, recently, Brookfield Asset Management took a majority stake in Oak Tree. What's the future of Oak Tree within that broader organization? Brookfield is a great alternatives manager in, in Canada. It's one of the largest in the world, um, specializing in private equity, real estate, re re renewable energy, and infrastructure. But they had very little uh, uh, expertise in securities and especially credit. Whereas the investment world wants increased exposure to credit, Brookfield concluded that they could build that capability, but it would take them a lot longer and the result would be uncertain as opposed to acquiring that capability through Oak Tree. We, we will continue to operate separately from Brookfield, distinct unit, and we, uh, the management of Oak Tree continues to manage Oak Tree. And uh, we thought that we could get more from an association with Brookfield. It's working very well so far. Uh, totally totally uh, synergistic, but uh, independent. As you look to grow the firm over time, how do you manage scale, particularly when it comes to things like launching new products, new strategies? You know, it's, it's a great question. The truth about investing is that good performance brings more money. And if allowed to go unchecked, more money brings bad performance. Eventually, you reach a size where you lose your uh, selectivity and agility. Uh, we are very conscious of this fact. We have always constrained our assets. Importantly, uh, at, at, at a time when alternative investment managers can gain a lot of assets, we really haven't grown very much over the last five or six years. And we think that that is an advantage for our clients. We are resolved to stay uh, at a size where we can still do a great job for the clients. Um, and we consider that more important than maximizing assets. I think that an investment manager should stand for something other than assets under management. So for example, when we, when we form a new fund, we try to, it, now it's very challenging because a closed end fund of course is, is fixed in size, but we have to figure out today how the fund that we start marketing in a year and market for a year and has an investment life, uh, investment period of five years, we have to try to think about how the investment opportunities will be three, four years out. Very challenging. Uh, we don't want to take too little and leave money on the table and not be able to scoop up the bargains. We don't want to take too much and be constrained in our activities. So we do it very consciously. And one thing I'm very proud of is that the record of our funds shows great variation in the size of the funds. So they have judged the future environment reasonably. You've been in the market for several decades now. When you look at Oak Tree, where do you see it in the next 10 to 20 years? How do you see it developing? I think that we will continue to stand for the opportunity to participate in our asset classes, but with the risk under control. That's how we view uh, our specialization now. That's how we view what clients come to Oak Tree for. And I hope we'll always deliver that. I'd like to continue to do that. So in that regard, no change. We'll probably get bigger over time, uh, but not so that it has a negative effect on results. Uh, I'm sure we'll have to uh, evolve our asset classes. As, as new asset classes are formed, uh, we'll try to stay at the vanguard of alternative investing and especially uh, credit. Um, and other than that, I hope there will never be a change. I don't think I, th I don't think our uh, investment philosophy is going to go out of style. I don't. I hope there'll never be a change in our culture as to our uh, business principles. And uh, I'd like to see uh, ten or twenty years from now uh, that Oakry is thought of in the same way. And how finally, while we've got you, we must get your thoughts on fixed income markets. Uh, we're talking at the, towards the tail end of 2020. It's been an extraordinary year. What do you see as the major risks out there for fixed income? What are the potential rewards? 
Um, the dominant consideration in the financial world today is the low interest rates. And they have a pervasive influence on everything because if the Fed funds rate is zero and treasuries yield less than one, then, it, then the returns, the prospective returns on every other asset class also fall to be fair relative to those low uh, base, baselines. Uh, so we're in a low return world. Uh, there's a temptation on most people's parts to move into riskier asset classes, uh, including ours, and to take a riskier approach to those asset classes uh, to try to get a good return in a low return world. We don't think that's wise to, to take a riskier approach. Uh, there are lots of uncertainties in the world. The rewards, uh, the absolute rewards for taking incremental risk are, are modest today. And uh, so we are uh, uh, pursuing our specializations, but I would say with more caution than usual. And uh, uh, I, I think it's the right one and uh, it's the one that our clients prefer. Howard Marks, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark.